Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. I'm not going to be on camera today because I'm busy finishing the photography for a couple of products, but nevertheless, we do have several very interesting news topics to go through. I'm going to start things with GFX 904. This is an entry on Geekbench, and I'd like to thank viewer Tom for emailing me over the link directly. So let's go through what we can learn about this particular uh, product. Uh, obviously, it's by Advanced Micro Devices, AMD, and it uh, has the device name of GFX 904. This would imply it's Vega, because RDNA is GFX 10, and GFX 9 usually references Vega products. So assuming it's not being misidentified, we can basically say that it is Vega related. The number of compute units is only 16. So if you times 16 by 64, because each compute unit houses 64 shaders, that gives us 1,024 total, which would not be that many. That would imply it's quite a, a low performance device. Uh, the clock frequency is 1.5 gigahertz, and the device memory has uh, 4 gigabytes total, which we can assume is high bandwidth memory. So that's not that impressive. Uh, that would basically be slightly less powerful than the uh, Vega 20 uh, based GPU, the Radeon Pro Vega 20, that was actually available for Macs. Uh, that's very similar, although that has 1280 cores. So yeah, we are looking still at four compute units fewer here. Uh, there's a question though of whether this is actually a discrete GPU. It looks very much like it, uh, particularly given the fact that, of course, the CPU that's uh, running with this thing is actually an Intel CPU. Uh, it is an Intel i7-3960X, so it's several generations old, but obviously that doesn't particularly matter any when it comes to testing GPUs, or whether they basically work or not. Uh, so it's either possibly the GPU which is going to be found in an APU later, but I'm probably going to guess it's going to be a discrete GPU of some description. It's really interesting that they're doing this, that they're going to be releasing a GPU which I'm going to make the assumption isn't going to be that much faster than something like an RX 560 at best. So it's going to be really interesting to see exactly what AMD are going to be charging for this product and also what the usage scenario for this product is going to be. But from one AMD product to another, and this one is Renault. And I'd like to thank viewer Martin for actually sending me over this link. Uh, he linked me to forenix.com. I swear you guys are like on top of things the last few days. Um, anyway, uh, so this particular... Um, a piece of news actually concerns a driver update, a Linux driver update, uh, which is the initial support for Renault. So this uh, update actually took place yesterday, which was the 9th of August, and we saw 27 patches. So there's around 2,000 lines of code, but around 50% of that was basically header files, aka just auto-generated, so that doesn't really count. Um, but from what we can gather... Uh, from these entries, it would appear that we are looking at a Zen 2 CPU, but it's not going to be RDNA based for the GPU. No, it looks like it's going to once again be Vega. Now, Renault, from what we understand anyway, based on leaked roadmaps and just murmurs and whispers on, you know, on the internets, is not expected to be released until next year, so some point in 2020. So that's kind of interesting that we're looking at at least six months-ish before this product uh, is officially launched, but we're still seeing uh, driver code for it. Uh, the patches do confirm, though, that we will see VCN support for this, which is also kind of interesting, but we don't know much in terms of the performance targets. What we can say is that it has a single PC ID, and that is 0x1636, so I'd heavily suggest that we keep our eye on that. There's also rampant speculation whether it's going to be a monolithic design, uh, design excuse me, 
which would incorporate Zen 2 cores and a 7nm Vega GPU, or whether it's going to be a chiplet design. According to leaked roadmaps from last year, it's actually well over a year ago now that these roadmaps were leaked, so it's very possible that they are out of date, as things can be, but uh, Renault was actually targeting both mobile and desktop APUs, but further, there's also another APU as well, which is apparently in the works, and that's known as Dali. But we actually know even fewer details about that Dali compared to what we do about Renault, so there's certainly still a lot of mysteries on uh, AMD's uh, APU front. In the latter part of last month, there was a 10-core Glacier Falls HGTT processor discovered on the user benchmark database. It is denoted as just Intel 0000, and its 10 processor cores was running at just 3.1 GHz, but the boost frequency was running at 3.05 GHz, aka that's not right. Indeed, the month prior to even that, on the Sysoft Sandra database, there was a very similar processor that was discovered, a very similar Glacier Falls processor, that was also only 10 cores, but it had a much higher boost and base clock. It was 4 GHz and 4.6 GHz, respectively. Well, there's yet another update, and this comes to us through the Euro-Asian Economic Commission website, also known as eaeunion.org, and it would appear that Intel are actually sending out these processors now. Glacier Falls HEDT External Silicon Upgrade Kit Qualification Sample Developer Kit. This was sent, or rather the date of publication was 8 8 2019, so just a few days ago, and the registration date was uh, 07 31 2019, so obviously that's US date. Now, there are a lot of questions in regards to what Intel's plans are for release. Uh, there have been a couple of roadmaps, and there's also been a couple of murmurs that we're going to be seeing Intel launch new CPUs either September or October time, uh, and it would be most likely that we are going to be seeing a HEDT uh, platform refresh from Intel within that time window. As for Comet Lake, which of course is the mainstream CPU lineup from Intel for desktop, uh, which is rumored slash you know reported to be up to 10 processor cores. Uh, it is still using the Skylake architecture though, but uh, there are a lot of rumors that it's going to have improvements such as higher clock frequency. Uh, it's a good chance that that's going to launch later than the HEDT platform. So potentially we could be looking at the latter part of this year or p potentially even early next year. Although there is also some conflicting leaks that we could also be seeing it at roughly the same time fr uh, time frame as a Glacier Falls. I think Intel at this point just needs to get something new out. Obviously the 9900K just isn't enough right now to compete with uh, the Ryzen 3000 series. So clearly Intel are going to be as keen as possible to get out uh, its processor lineup. Okay, I've got a question. What does AMD, ARM, Cisco, Dell, Facebook, oh, Google, Intel, and now NVIDIA all have in common? Well, if you guessed that they are members of the CXL Consortium, you would be 110% correct, because now NVIDIA are the newest members. In fact, they are actually listed on the CXL website. If you're unfamiliar what CXL is, it's a high-speed interconnect which allows super fast, uh, low latency connections between the CPU as well as various accelerators. Obviously, accelerators could be anything from dedica dedicated, excuse me, ASX or GPUs and so on and so on. We've actually discussed CXL rather in depth several times in the past, which is one of the reasons I'm kind of glancing over it in this particular news video. So NVIDIA aren't without their own technology. They obviously have their own proprietary technology by the name of NVLink. But NVLink is not exactly a wide open standard. So CXL was actually a brainchild 
by Intel. It started originally in Intel's own laboratories, but very quickly started to get additional support. So it is a consortium, uh, much like, let's say, Kronos, who uh, there's a whole group of different companies which obviously come together to support the uh, let's say OpenGL or Vulkan standard, so it's kind of like that here with CXL. And this means that we have, uh, at least the consortium believes, although there are competing standards, we have the next generation of high-speed CPU-to-device and CPU-to-memory interconnect. So NVLink was something that NVIDIA have been pioneering by itself, and they also acquired the company Mellanox, which are a data networking technology company. So they acquired them for about seven billion US dollars, a shade under 6.9 billion US dollars. So they got a pretty good bargain there. But Mellanox themselves happened to already be a member of the consortium when they were purchased by Nvidia. So what does this really mean? What does Nvidia get out of this? Well, it really allows Nvidia to kind of target a wider market because well, CXL is an open standard. It's not quite clear at the moment what NVIDIA are planning, though, with terms of product support for this. Uh, the plan at the moment, anyway, is to basically use the interface of PCIe 5.0, basically use the PCIe 5.0 backbone. But anyway, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully, you've enjoyed it. If you did, then be sure to subscribe to the channel for much more content, and I hope you have an amazing day. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.